Uh, we're going to look at the Lisp monad in this video. Again, remember the introduction for all monads is I've done that at least hopefully I've done that in my in my previous videos. And um, what I'm going to do right now is just kind of get into the gist of the Lisp monad. Okay, so the way I'm going to begin this problem is um, let's assume I've got a function f prime. Let's call this function f right now. A function f that simply goes from an int to an int. Okay, I'm making a very, very specific case here, okay, just to give you the intuition what is going to happen as we as we as we proceed with our with our list monad. And I've got a function g here that goes from an integer to an integer. And again, as we've seen in this earlier videos, that the function composition of f prime, sorry, function composition of f with g with g is going to be a function that goes from an integer to an integer. And this all it's all great because I can see I can see that um, I can see that uh, let me just get rid of all these color palettes that I don't need to get displayed and I can see that in this case um, g is a function that takes in as an input some integer okay that piece, piece in blue that piece in blue over here is this piece in blue there and it gives it back as an output some integer there and whatever that integer here is the output of g must match up with the input of f such that the output of f which is this purple box should be that piece over there okay so everything matches up because there is no mismatch in my in my types there and this works perfectly perfectly great okay now the question is if i have if i make some changes to my function f there okay for some reason i'm going to change it such that it goes from an integer to a list of integers so let's say i have a function f prime now okay where this function goes from an integer to some kind of a list of integers. And I've got a function g prime that goes from some integer to some list of integers. And now if I try to do a function composition of f prime with g prime, okay, what is this type change going to be here? Now, with the same, the same reasoning that I did earlier, I have this piece in the blue box over there okay and um, which gives you back as an output something in this shade of pink which is uh, this list of integers which must match up which must match up with the input of f prime so that finally you could have you could have this piece in purple giving back a list of integers the first thing i see there's a type mismatch i can see that this list of integers does not match up with that int there Okay, there's, there's a completely a type mismatch here, which means that previously when f and g function composition was succeeding, the only change of putting in, in that in that in that in the square bracket, which is my list now, I'm getting a function composition failure. So what should I do so that this actually succeeds here? Well, the way to make it succeed, and again, again, just using things from my last video when we looked in, when we're looking at the maybe monad and monads in general, is that the output of g prime. The output of g prime okay so let's look at g prime again g prime is a function that takes in an integer and spits out some value of type list of integers this list of integers whatever the list of integers is such that is going to get fed into this into this function there so we need to somehow upgrade f prime okay so i'm just going to rewrite this again i'm just going to rewrite this again so i've got my g prime there okay and the output of g prime which is my list of integers should be such that when it goes into this blue box, when it goes into this blue box, right, whatever this blue box is, whatever I'm going to write a function that would be in that blue box should be such that it's going to take in as an input a type that is in, that is in sync with the type of the output of G prime. The type of the output of G prime is a list of integers. This piece right there. Okay, and that list of integers must be the input must also be the input of this blue box over there okay so what should i what should i what should i do how should i put this blue box such that it takes in a list of integers so i'm going to take the assistance of the bind method you can think of bind method right now some kind of a helper method okay think of this some kind of helper method and what it's going to do is it's going to say okay look give me a function give me a function okay give me a function as an input and that function that says f prime that goes from an integer to a list of integers is simply going to upgrade it. It's simply going to upgrade it such that the input of this new function, which is this blue box over here, is going to take in a list of integers. It's just going to upgrade f prime. So 
looking back at our at a bind method what is the bind method doing in this specific context the bind method takes in as an input a function f prime okay it takes in as an input some f prime but again keep in mind that this blue rectangle is bind of f prime okay now i'm just kind of zooming in a little bit into what this bind is actually doing well this bind is taking as an input some f prime so this f prime in this context happens to be a function that goes from an integer to a list of integers okay it takes in as an input that function there and it's going to give you back as an output it's going to give you back as an output some new function such that it can take in this new function is this is the blue box here okay so let's, let's just make be consistent with our colors here let me put that blue box over here okay so that everything that i'm going to write over now right now over here is going to be this entire piece in blue box well this blue box over here takes in a list of integers as an input okay and as an output as an output it's just going to give you back another list of integers okay so you can think of this as giving back another output as a list of integers so this blue box over here takes in a list of integers which is completely in sync with the output type of g prime and it gives you back as an output another list of integers which is this list of integers right there okay so now i know exactly what the bind is doing can i provide an implementation to the bind method okay so uh, the implementation to the bind method is going to be as follows so let's 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 write bind okay that's the type signature this piece over here is my type signature now i'm going to provide a value i'm going to provide an implementation to this to this to this bind method so it takes as an input some function right let's call it some function f prime okay and it takes in some value it takes in some value that happens to be a list of integers now i know a list of integers but if i just use pattern matching if i just use pattern matching here i can say that if this list of integers happens to be nil or it happens to be empty okay so let's say if it happens to be empty and i'm just going to use the I'm just going to use nil to represent that happens to be an empty empty list i'm just going to give you back as an output some other list of integers that happens to be also empty okay now what if this list is not empty well if this list is not empty so f prime and let's call this something that happens to be i don't know y s okay what should i give you back as an output well as an output i should give you back something that happens to be another list of integers now how am i going to generate this list of integers such that just by just with playing f prime and just with playing y s here now if i look at f prime here f prime is a function that only takes in a single integer it just takes in a single integer this piece over here this piece over here is basically what my f prime looks like the type signature of f prime okay f prime could be any function that obeys that type signature but whatever this function f prime is is going to take in as an input a single integer but what i have over here is basically a list of integers so what i really need to do is somehow extract these extract one of these y's out from here and feed it feed it into f prime keep on feeding into f prime here okay so i'm going to i'm going to use map here i'm going to use map here okay and what map does basically is takes in this f f prime and takes in this y s okay so i'm going to take each one of these y's out from this list of y s so again as an example if you think of this y s containing one two three four okay i'm going to take this one out from here then i'm going to take a two out from there I'm going to take a three out from it take the four out of it and as i take each one of them out from that list of integers i'm going to feed it into f prime and f prime is a function it's going to take in that integer this integer that you extract from that y s i'm going to give you back another list of integer okay so so this f prime gives you back a list of integers okay so this basically gives you back as an output okay so this takes in an integer and gives you back a list of integers this y s over here happens to be a list of integers and what is the type signature for map here well map the type signature for map is a function that goes from a to b and it takes in a list of a's and gives you back a list of b's here so let's think from the context what are these a's and what are these b's here so these a's and b's okay so this a over here is acting as an integer because this function f prime takes in as an input some integer okay and i'm just using my type inferences here so i know that this b over here is acting as a list of integers this b over here is acting as a list of integer because that's what my function is and um a is acting as an integer so what i have is then a list of integers okay and what should i get back as an output from the entire map here well the entire map because b is a list of integers so the entire output of map is going to be this piece there okay so if map f prime y s the entire output 
type of map f prime y s is going to be a list of list of integers isn't that in contrary to what I expect the bind method to give me back as an output, which is just a list of integers, right? So I, need to, I still need to do something. I'm still not entirely done with this with this output here, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to perform a concat. I'm going to perform a concat on this entire piece there. Okay, perform a concat on that entire piece there, such that such that concat. What does concat do then? Well, concat it basically flattens a list. It takes in a list of list of a's and gives you back a list of a. It just flattens that list of list of a's into a list of a's. So in this case, map f prime y s happens to be a list of list of integers. It flattens it into a list of integers. And that's exactly in sync with what the bind method should give you back as an output. So what we have now is the implementation. We have the implementation also to a bind method for a list monad. Okay, what's remaining now is the implementation to the return method and how are we going to abstract the M type constructor for a list monad, right? And how are we going to make sure that we can use our monadic laws so that at least at least the implementation of this unit is also in kind of this with this with this with this in sync here. We'll do that in our next video.